Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to discuss a very important topic and in not a very routine manner. Usually you will see indications of ileostomy and colostomy as a table. But this was a recent talk that I gave in the conference on stomas basically. And what we were attempting to do here is make it a case-based approach. That is, you will see different cases and you will see how different types of stomas can be used or tailored to each and every case separately. How this will make an impression in our mind is that we see specific scans. Mm -hmm. First of all, we identify disease on those scans. We devise a plan. And based on that plan, we decide what kind of stoma will be required. So this was a very case-based approach that was used in this talk. And that is what we are going to see. So not so long ago, it was believed that it is better to die rather than have a stoma. So the picture that you see is an actual photo of probably the first patient who had a colostomy. And this was a line by a doctor that most plain persons as well as many physicians and surgeons have the terror of constantly discharging intestinal stoma and believe that death is preferable to an ileostomy. This was in 1952. And we have come a long way in our understanding of stomas from here. And we know that often we can save patients' lives by doing a stoma. So we have already discussed in our video on basics of ileostomy and colostomy where we have discussed the definition and the classification. In this video, we are going to have a case-based discussion on how to diagnose, how to plan your surgery and then how to decide what stoma will be required. So what is a stoma? We have already discussed. It's a Greek word which means mouth or opening. Stoma can be of many types and you can classify it based on size, say ileostomy, jejunostomy, gastrostomy, colostomy. Duration, it can be temporary or permanent and we have seen this based on functionality. It can be diversion stoma where you just divert the stool stream or it can be defunctioning stoma. Based on the anatomy of the stoma, you can divide it as an end stoma or a loop stoma or a double barrel stoma. Continence mechanism can be added to stoma. If you have not understood this classification, we have a separate video on stoma classification so you can have a look. So now let us see some cases that we have actually managed in our unit and you can see how the plan was decided for stomas and what stomas were done. So here if you can see this is an MRI if you are not aware about the MRI. This is MRI rectum and what you can do is we have a separate video on MRI of the rectum for planning surgery for cancers. This patient had a growth in the rectum and the patient actually needed an APR because there was no way to preserve the sprinter. If you want, you can see the enococcygeal line. The disease is well below the anal coccygeal line. And this patient will need a permanent end colostomy. So this is what this patient will need. So diagnosis, plan your surgery, and stoma is a part of your decision making. So because you are removing the entire rectum and anal canal, this patient will end up with a permanent end colostomy. Now, another case involving the sigmoid colon, this is a CT scan and the arrows can show very clearly diverticular disease. You can see a collection anteriorly with air in it. It's a case of perforated diverticulitis. The patient will need a sigmoid colectomy. You can do a Hartman, which is again an end colostomy. Or you can do a primary colorectal anastomosis with a diversion stoma. So based on duration, in the second case, it's a temporary stoma. We know this is diversion stoma for colorectal anastomosis or an ileotransverse anastomosis. If you are diverting for colorectal anastomosis, most patients prefer a loop transverse colostomy or a loop ileostomy. 
for ileo transverse anastomosis you will need a loop ileostomy stoma for intestinal perforation peritonitis many times you will not do an anastomosis in this case but you will just bring out the perforation as a stoma most common cases where we do this is intestinal tuberculosis typhoid or diverticulitis permanent stoma like our case 1 APR where entire distal bowel is rejected you will need an end colostomy there is an indication for end ileostomy as a permanent stoma and this is done in cases of total proctocolectomy where in indication like familial adenomatous polyposis or ulcerative colitis so you can see some indications the two cases that we have discussed and it is the planning of these cases which helps you in deciding whether you need a temporary or a permanent stoma and whether you need an end stoma or a loop stoma this is another case that we have managed you can see extensive disease is a coronal mri image the entire pelvis is filled with disease this is an inoperable growth and though this patient has distal intestine there is no way that you are going to reject this tumor and the patient going to end up with a permanent stoma due to intestinal obstruction so that is again a way in which cancer can present in the rectum and the patient may need a permanent stoma now another case that we managed recently and this was a very interesting case because this is not a disease related to colon or intestines actually if you have diagnosed by now this is the area where the pancreas should be this was a case of severe acute necrotizing pancreatitis and why we are discussing this here because if you can appreciate here there was a collection and the collection totally engulf the colon into and what this resulted in was a tiny perforation in this area and because of colon involvement which is this is the ascending colon we had to do a temporary loop ileostomy for this patient and this is a rare indication where you need an ileostomy or a colostomy in patient with acute necrotizing pancreatitis so diagnose your scan if you had just done a drainage for this patient the patient would have ended up in fecal peritonitis if you see the scans well the colon was grossly inflamed and in this area it was obstructed it showed air in the surrounding collection and what we needed was a temporary loop ileostomy so based on functionality the diversion stoma basically is to divert the fecal stream and protect the distal anastomosis it can be a low colorectal anastomosis or a colo anal anastomosis or distal ileo transverse anastomosis you can also do it to exclude an obstructed system like we saw in one of our cases functioning stoma is done when there is distal diseased bowel and it is done to give rest to the bowel and in cases of abdominal tuberculosis you may do a defunctioning stoma so one more case you can see here there is locally advanced rectal cancer the patient will need neoadjuvant chemo radiation because the crm is threatened this usually results in low anterior resection after neoadjuvant chemo radiation or total neoadjuvant therapy we have separate videos on those topics but these are cases where once radiation is given most units will prefer doing a loop colostomy or a loop ileostomy to protect the anastomosis so it's always in plan after long course radiation therapy for low rectal cancer so now if we see the table that is usually seen in the books you can see that most of these cases we have discussed and these are usually seen in our clinics and if you see these cases and if you diagnose these cases and plan their treatment you will naturally come to know what kind of stoma you are going to use so there is no need to mug these tables up if you understand the indications it's very easy to understand why this table is given in the books and how to write it in exam so for ileostomy it can be tb typhoid ulcerative colitis crohn's disease where we are going to do a total proctocolectomy with ileostomy or in cases of toxic megacolon formulaire adenomatous polyposis traumatic bowel perforation 
commonly seen cases are the ones in the red, rarely seen cases, mesentery ischemia and radiation enteritis. On the other hand, colostomy, we have seen a lot of cases, diverticulitis, malignancy. You may need emergency hardman for obstruction or perforation of malignancy, diversion during elective surgery, especially post-radiation, and diversion for ultra-low coloanal or colorectal anastomosis. Complex and high anorectal malformation surgery, usually the first step is colostomy. Anastomotic leaks, you will need to divert and defunction the anastomosis and you will need a colostomy or ileostomy. Diverticulitis, you may do a primary rejection anastomosis with diverting stoma or you may do a Hartman procedure. And in blunt or penetrating trauma, you will need colostomy or ileostomy. So the key to success in surgery and to understanding this topic Iliostomy and colostomy is not a routinely discussed topic, but this is the third video that we are trying to make on this topic because it's important to understand the indications. You have to understand the diagnosis, the comorbidities that the patient has, the risk that is involved in the surgery. If the patient is on inotropes, your anastomosis is on risk. If the patient is frail and not preoperatively optimized or it's an emergency surgery, ultra-low anastomosis or post-radiation therapy, severe sepsis, contaminated abdomen, severe anemia or massive blood loss that has not been optimized before the surgery, patient is on long-term steroids, or when you are in doubt that the anastomosis is not looking good, these days you also have the facility of ICG that you can use to measure the blood flow in the anastomosis and see if you are happy with the anastomosis. Whenever in doubt, remember that a stoma can be life-saving and it is something that is never going to harm the patient if done properly. So to summarize, different types of stomas are there for different indications. Colostomy is easier to manage when feasible because the output is not as high and not as liquid as in ileostomy or jejunostomy. Like I said, stoma is life-saving when deemed necessary or when you are in doubt regarding the conditions that we discussed. So understand the need of the case, select your surgical procedure and plan your stoma accordingly. This is our website. I am sure most of you know by now. We have book recommendations. There are a lot of videos and you can get in touch with our faculties through our email ID. Thank you.